Hey, what's going on? Sean Marmello here. Welcome to my channel. I make videos about how to make a living as a musician, whether it's part-time or full-time. I also give uh, a lot of tips and advice, and I do tutorials on how to play songs and uh, technique and things like that. And this channel exists for people to leverage my 30 plus years of experience as a professional musician playing all over the world. So, so today, I had a question from one of the uh, viewers that was asking how to transition over from your day job to a full-time musician. So I'm gonna try to answer that. Stay tuned. All right, I had a viewer that was asking how to transition over to being a full-time musician from your day job. So I'll just briefly touch on my experience. I was on the road from 17 to 18 for about a year with a band in the 80s. And I got some really nice experience touring and it was a, a cover circuit thing and, um, and it was it was fun and I was the lead singer and but ultimately I decided I wanted to join the military and just get that out of the way because I'd always wanted to do it so I joined at 18 I went in at 19 and I came out at 20 I got a medical discharge I was injured during training at 20 years old I found myself back in Florida with a truncated plan and I'd always planned on getting back into music and doing it full-time so I had an uncle that was playing full-time in bands and solo acoustic and uh, he took me under his wing showed me a song list kind of like what I'm doing here told me how to do things I already knew how to deal with crowds and things like that because I'd been on the road for a year before that so I started working up my song list sitting in doing t tunes with him playing sets at his gig and I ended up getting together with my old bass player forming an acoustic duo and we started working we started playing and little by little we got more gigs and it just blew up from there as far as insurance and things like that I was still covered under my mom's insurance after I got rid of the USAA stuff from the army because I'd gone back to school again which was a theme uh, pretty much for my entire life up until my, about age 40 insurance was cheap back then there was no healthcare.gov BS it was PPO or major medical back then it was Blue Cross Blue Shield and uh, it was good insurance you can go to any doctor you wanted and I had it and it was cheap it was under my mom's work and then when I transitioned to my own uh, health care it was like a hundred dollars a month in the early 90s so now what you have to do if you want health care um, first of all keep yourself healthy I've done videos on how to keep yourself healthy and why that's so important for your voice for your playing for your hands and things like that it's very important to just try to keep yourself as healthy as you can so you have a long career as a musician. It's, you, you're not going to have a long career if you're unhealthy, you eat bad, you don't exercise, and you develop things like arthritis and diabetes, and, and you smoke a lot and you drink. That's going to affect your voice, that'll affect your playing, and it's going to shorten your career and life. But if you still feel you need major medical, which most people do, today, healthcare.gov will, will square you away. Let me just touch on this subject, in which is finances. If you're a musician or you are trying to transition into full-time or part-time professional musician life, it is the utmost important that you live very far below your means. And not because you're not gonna make any money, but because you wanna maximize your time available to practice and develop your craft. And you just, you can't, you can't be obsessed with a, a career outside of music because you're not going to develop to your potential if you don't put the time in. If, you, if you're away from music for 60 hours a week, number one, you're gonna be too tired to practice much and work up tunes and, and get good at your craft and your instrument. It's vocals, guitar, whatever it is you play, keys, drums. Uh, and number two, you're just not going to be able to, uh, you're just not gonna get to the point where you, you wanna get. I've never seen a part-time musician that always had day jobs come up, and no matter how talented they are, in a raw sense, develop to the point where they are on par with a professional, talented musician who did nothing but music or did the majority of music. That's not to say you can't have a job, and you know early like me, until you work up to the point where you can actually make money gigging, you could get jobs like waiting tables or Starbucks or stocking shelves or just, you know, Try to live with your parents as long as possible, especially today, and just work up from there. You don't want to take on a career type job that's outside of music because it just takes your mental focus and takes your 
time away from your instruments and your writing tunes, learning tunes, developing your style, uh, developing your singing, and just from there. So I would say live below your means, live cheap, uh, embrace minimalism, and just don't have debt. If you don't need it, don't buy it. And if you do need it, buy it for cash. And eventually, if you want to get your own place, you know, the thing about having a house and things like that is uh, the more you have, the more you have to work, and the more of a slave you are to it. Unless you are, unless you have some kind of generational wealth where you don't have to worry about it, you have, you know, trust funds like I've known other musicians, or you have, you know, you're, you're rich, things like that, uh, then you're good, you're golden. But that whole getting roped into the 40-40 plan as an artist and or a musician, that is that a death sentence. That's poison. You can get to the point where you, you know, those things tie you down. You want to be flexible if you want a career as a musician. You want to be flexible to take off at a moment's notice to go on tour. You want to have the flexibility to <clears throat> go play cruise ships for a year around the world, sign contracts. You know, and if you have houses and mortgages and credit cards and car payments, you're a slave. You can't have any of that stuff. It took me years to figure it out. Well, I knew it in the beginning. And then, you know, so I mean, and another thing is if you have a spouse or a partner that works and they have insurance and you could be covered under their insurance, that's beautiful. We had an arrangement where we lived, we, we said we we're going to give you five years of me writing songs and taking care of the kids when they were young and first in school. My wife was going to work. So she had insurance through her work and I was able to stay home all day, write songs, record, demo, make my connections, do co-writes and try to do the Nashville thing. So we did that. Um, nowadays you can go on healthcare.gov and if you are uh, a musician and your, your income isn't that high, it should cost you very little to get major medical full-time you know it should cost you very little to get full insurance if anything now as far as taxes yes you're gonna have to pay your own taxes you're gonna have you're gonna be paid by 1099 you're gonna learn what a schedule of C is you're gonna learn all about that I highly if you're not stupid you can learn that it's very simple I've been paying my own taxes for over 30 years um, and I like it I like the flexibility you can write off your your studio Part of your expenses in your house for office space you can write off mileage standard deduction for your vehicles for working back and forth fuel costs food when you're out having to eat out because you're gigging so the game plan is if you're working a job you start working up your tunes working up your song list you start sitting in with other musicians you play open mic nights then you get a gig then you get better and better and better and then your weekends are full of gigs and then if you want to keep going you transition to weekdays you, you, you find if it's viable in your scene you start getting gigs in the week in the evenings and get to the point where you're making a certain a percentage of your income or even maybe a majority of your income gigging then you can think about getting rid of your day job and transitioning over um, I've touched on this videos before it geographically depends on where you're located I maintain still Florida is the number one best place to make a living as a musician in the country because it's a year-round huge peninsula all around the coast there are countless places where you can play tiki bars little little uh, you know island grills and sports pubs and uh, brew pubs and for me it's resorts on the ocean and I mean it, it, it's you can't get countless tens of thousands of places to play so if you want to be a full-time musician, Florida is probably the best state. But it really doesn't matter where you are, there's always going to be some places to play. I've touched on what you should accept for pay. Uh, absolutely never take a gig for under $150 in 2023 or beyond. Never do it. Just don't do it. It's not worth it. You're going to get taken advantage of. I've never seen, I've never seen it work out to where you start to pay for to play for way under what you're worth, and then you're able to you get raises no that's not how it works if you're talented you go in there and you you tell them what you are worth and you ask for that and then you get it and if you don't if 80% of the places won't play, won't pay you that that's okay if you're good you're gonna work up a following the words gonna get around and if you're playing for 50 or 100 dollars more than everybody else eventually most likely in my experience at least you're gonna end up getting that and you're gonna get it everywhere
So that's how you do it. You start small, you build into it. You look into your own insurance. As far as LLCs and uh, corporations and stuff like that, I've had them both. If, if you develop to the point where you have a business plan that's gonna, uh, you, you wanna focus on weddings or you have corporate properties and you're in Orlando or Vegas, or, that's when you start thinking about an LLC, start thinking about a corporation. At that point, you're gonna need some liability insurance for events and things like that. But if you don't need any of that, dispense with it. Uh, you're not gonna be paying much taxes, if any at all, as a solo proprietor of a business. Um, so you can just do it as a sole, sole proprietorship if you want. Nowadays, you know, we're in a litigious society, so it might not be a bad idea to have an LLC. It costs like 100 or 150 bucks to start one. Um, I have several, or I've had several over the years. I dissolved my last one. Um, but I'm probably gonna get another one because I wanna have some layers of protection moving forward. And you could have, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah music, LLC, and you don't even have to do it. And if you're the principal of that LLC, checks can be made out to you, depending on where you live. Or you can just do a DVA as Sean Mormella and have the checks made out to you, even though it goes into your business bank account. So that's just another layer of protection. I would highly suggest you keep up on your taxes. If you don't understand it, go over it with the CPA for the first time. But nowadays with TurboTax and Tax Act and free tax and stuff like that, it, it, it's very simple to figure it out for yourself. Uh, keep up on that and I think that pretty much covers everything that the viewer was asking me so again thanks for being here Sean Mormello how to make a living as a musician I don't care if it's part-time or full-time and uh, if you have any more questions let me know and uh, again please like and please like and subscribe and then we'll see you in the next video okay